yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to start by grounding myself to this land and uh, introducing myself in our Algonquin language, uh, the Shinnecock people. Akwe uh, Natampak, Kelly Natasuis, Kwa Takine Hado Namo, Jamoseyang Tanapsag Natasuis, Dennis Nishishayawank, Shinnecock. Uh, Kwa Hasanamisko Nipmunk Nichipayuank Shinnecock Reservation the top. So it just means hello my friends. My name is Kelly. Um, and I also have Takine Hado Namo Jimo Sangyang Tanapsog as my um, Algonquin name. Uh, Dennis is my last name. I am Shinnecock and also Hasanamisko Nipmunk. Um, and uh, I live on the Shinnecock Reservation. Um, I have so much enjoyed listening to this panel um, and there, I find so many different uh, connections between everything that has already been said. Um, Junie, when you, you spoke, um, you, you mentioned um, how uh, Doreen Dennis, uh, my aunt, <laughs> was part of your program and there she was sitting in front of the, the bulldozer. Um, and I wouldn't be here unless I was part of Junie's program back in the day um, at SYS. And, um, and there's so many different um, Shinnecock kids who continue to uh, participate in Bonnie Cannons and also Shinnecock of all ages who go and participate in Minerva's activities um, and Ola and all the great things that are happening in our community. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's just a, a really wonderful feeling that, you know, Tamashi somehow was able to come <laughs> and just see the magic that's happening here, because it really is. Um, and I was really, you know, uh, just in a, in an interesting place um, when I met Tomashi and I, and I was thinking about running for tribal leadership for the Shinnecock Indian Nation. And I really didn't think that, you know, it was going to go anywhere. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, just it's, it's all politics. Um, but I decided that I wanted to go and pray about it. Um, and I wanted to do that in our, our, our Shinnecock Hills, uh, where the land claim is situated, uh, that Tila spoke about. And I, and so I went to, um, Sugarloaf, um, which is really, uh, I think they, they've captured part of my experience going there when they did the sketch and, and in the writing here, um, and just being able to see that this is the highest point, that this is where you could see the Peconic Bay as you go up, and then you turn the corner, and then you see, she sees Shinnecock Bay, and you see it go out into um, the Shinnecock Outlet, into the Atlantic Ocean, and it's such a beautiful space, and there a huge deer, uh, a buck, just came and stared at me in that moment and said, go for it. <laughs> you should go run and see what happens. <laughs> and um, then he ran away. And <laughs> uh, but that it felt like creator was talking to me and I, I had a, a powerful kind of moment. Um, and it, yeah, it just, I, I shared that and, and um, just that we're still here and that, you know, we have um, this momentum to keep going forward and to keep fighting and to, you know, find ways to make, you know, living here sustainable together. Um, and so I, at the time, was working at the Watermill Center um, and just watching Tomashi um, do the work and, and find the images. Um, I was the, the public programs um, and uh, a coordinator there and residency coordinator. 
And this piece that my brother uh, Jeremy brought up before at the, the basement at Ma's house, our playroom, um, is, you know, my cousins and I playing with this train set. And the, I don't know, there was some kind of c connection that Tomashi saw there. Well, and this, this piece is called uh, um, of, uh, of Airs, I believe. And um, it just kind of made me think about our whole history with the land claim too and the railroad coming through. And I remember how crazy my brother used to be as a child. And I know that he would like see this beautiful train thing that we put together and we'd have it all nice and neat and really built up and they'd come and just destroy it all. <laughs> and um, loved him for it. Um, and so it's just, you know, it, it, there's all kinds of layers and, and symbolism in, in what Tomashi has really been able to, to put together here. And um, just speaking with her first about, you know, what she did at Harvard at the Radcliffe Institute with um, Brown versus the Board of Education um, and those pieces, um, I was like, well, I got to tell you about our land claim because that is another really interesting uh, legal history there and legal fight um, that I think that, you know, based on just everyone who lives out here has been touched and we also had that conscience point movie that came out and so there were there was just so much you know that i felt like tomashi could really kind of understand about living um in the hamptons among the one percent and you know how it's a struggle to remain here um and yet uh, amongst the ridiculous wealth, and yet here we are, um, just trying to to figure that out. And um, I think that she really does that beautifully through her work. Um, so there again, and this is Tila and her friend Nia who came and helped her out, and in this really beautiful space at the Watermill Center and. Just like the, the, the process of watching Tomashi do the work and how she really had to have like an all day discussion at least about each one of them. And you couldn't stop talking to her about all the pieces and the layers and where they should go. Um, and this piece, I wish we also put, put up the original image, but it is hanging in the gallery, is um, the Shinnecock children um, uh, kind of like uh, the piece that Minerva showed before. I saw a, sh a couple of Shinnecock people in there too, little kids. Um, and uh, in the original piece, you can see my brother kind of upset and running away because it was a hot day. <laughs> but they had us all out in our regalia. And so, um, but it was it's, it's definitely one of these iconic images um, of Shinnecock youth. And um, it's really beautiful how she she uses this um, image in a way to kind of hyperimpose us on the land um, that we're still here. Uh, and I also wanted to go back one one piece here uh, real quick. I meant to mention this, and, and Tila did on our tour uh, with the Shinnecock Youth Group, which is now the Boys and Girls uh, Shinnecock Boys and Girls Club. She uh, and Junie also spoke about this earlier about the um, the the potato fields, and as a base, Tomashi uses these potato bags, these burlap potato bags, and just speaking with Tomashi about you know what what happened um, to the to our land uh, at Shinnecock and how. Our, our ancestors were able to get by was um, to lease out our land to farmers who um, would uh, grow potatoes in, in, in the fields and we would work the fields and how they would spray the temic and how that would um, basically poison all of us um, and, and how it's still like a, a very big concern on, on our reservation lands about you know what the, how, how the soil is there and how it might be affecting us today. Um, so it was interesting that, you know, that she uses that as a base and, you know, we have that kind of 
weird history that's a very uncomfortable history with it and it's just it's just very interesting all the connections that are made with Tamashi's work. Um, so this is us again uh, at the, the doing with the Shinnecock Youth Clubhouse, Boys and Girls Club, and we're in, in front of uh, the Three Sisters piece, um, which uh, in, in the middle there uh, behind my mom uh, in the, the uh, ribbon skirt, um, there's, there's a picture of her, uh, my, our grandmother, Ma Loretta, which is Jeremy's uh, spoke about, she spoke about her earlier, and then he's also uh, our cousin Tila's grandmother too. Um, and uh, a close-up of the piece, you can also see our other, uh, our, our great-grandmother Pauline in there too. Um, another picture that was taken at the bottom of uh, Ma's house in the basement, probably during like a Christmas or something. Um, and my little brother is down in the corner, you can't really see, but uh, um, we're between my cousin Dan and uh, her son Hunter. Um, and uh, if you see the, the real piece out, uh, out there, the original, it's, it's a pretty cool layering of, of that and how it's done. And the story of, you know, Harvest and, and how we were able to, you know, really grow with um, the, the three sisters symbolism of corn, beans, and squash and what that meant to cultivate the land. And um, really it was interesting. Um, I spoke to a, a John Strong about this um, and, and how women really were the, um, the, the knowledge holders of the land. They, as the, the men were out um, whaling, the women were actually the one, ones kind of negotiating the deals about, because they knew where all the good and fertile land was and they wanted to be able to hold on to it. Um, and, uh, and so it's interesting how this kind of emanates through in, in this piece, uh, The Three Sisters. And this is us in the, uh, the research room, uh, looking at all the different resources. There's actually a copy there of the uh, writ of certiori to um, the Supreme Court on the Shinnecock land claim that uh, Tila and I uh, put together with the Native American Rights Fund. And so we, we spoke about that and, and the other uh, materials and books that are there. Um, and different connections and pictures, and uh, we were able to add some pieces to the wall as well, which is pretty fun. It was a big zoom up on me. And it was also fun to kind of do this, this uh, tie to all of Long Island um, with uh, not just our ties to the land, but the water uh, with my mom and, and the retreat, um, Denise Silva Dennis um, had a really nice uh, gathering of um, youth and, and um, just being able to, to share about how we are all protectors of um, this land and this water. Uh, Nipi meaning water, Nipi, Nipi is life, water is life, and, and Sewan Haki is uh, the name for, uh, Algonquin name for Long Island. And it was great that in addition to, we kind of added this as a, another piece to Tomashi's um, really fun activity about, you know, who are we to this land and what is our ancestors' connection to this land and who is the matriarch in your family that you look up to? Um, and what is your, you know, relationship with, with labor and your history with labor in your family? And just thinking about these these concepts um, as like a family kind of engagement and activity, I, I think after experiencing the exhibit is, it's really kind of a, a groundbreaking way of um, this archivist, artistic um, melding that Tomashi does with her work. And it, it really, I think, um, helped all of us, um, I mean, uh, and certainly myself, to, to think about the land claim differently, um, to see like what else it was there. Oh yeah, like there's this whole like land, um, like fight over who has access to the seaweed and um, like how that was used as fertilization and um, we couldn't get access to 
be able to cultivate seaweed, which took away from our, our way of being able to support our families and put insulation in our homes uh, to keep us warm in the winter time. And just all different kinds of, of really interesting um, concepts I've never thought about until Tomashi kind of uh, just kind of switched my brain in, in the way that she brought art into this. Um, and this is a, the last P, uh, image I have of me um, next to that kind of uh, layer that she has with the three sisters. And she's just like, oh, let me get a picture of you and your mom and your brother next to your piece. <laughs> and also my aunt also on the, on the right, Aunt Doreen, um, and my cousins, PJ and Ethan. Um, and, and that kind of just amazing process that she went through in order to be able to have what you'll experience if you have not yet out there. And, and we're just really grateful again for Tomashi Jackson and everything that um, came out of this amazing exhibit. So thank you. Sabutne. <laughs>